have enrolled in private health plans through the state's exchange, and more than 100,000 people have already qualified for Medicaid through the exchange. Meanwhile, California Republicans have been reduced to creating prank websites to prey upon their own constituents desperately seeking out information about health insurance. We reached out to all of the members of the Assembly, Assembly and State Senate from the Republican Party. We should note two California Republicans did agree to come on the show, but logistics got in the way. Joining me now is Congresswoman Karen Bass, Democrat from California. She was Speaker of the California State Assembly from 2008 to 2010. She knows her way around that state's politics. I am amazed that this existed, and this was one of those rare times when a headline actually captured how truly ridiculous the story was. Great reporting by the LA Times, which sniffed this out and wrote it up and brought it to my attention. Can you believe they did this? Uh, you know what, this is exactly as you described, an incredibly uh, new low. But you know what, I think that it is an example of desperation. Uh, in California, you know that the state is 100% behind Covered California and making sure that the Affordable Care Act is implemented. And for them to lower themselves to this level, I have to tell you, I'm shocked. And I'm shocked at the Republican leader. I do know her, and uh, I would have never imagined that she would have done that. Do you get whiplash moving back and forth between Washington, where you have the House, the Republicans, who have one chamber of Congress, who are headed towards the least productive Congress in history, and California, in which the GOP has been reduced essentially to a rump caucus that can do nothing more than make prank websites? Well, you know, during the time that I was there, even though they were the minority, we required super majorities to pass budgets and to raise revenue. Since I left, one of the reasons why they have been cast aside is because now Democrats control both chambers with super majority. But it's because of the antics that took place every year. You know, we used to shut down the government on an annual basis. It got so bad one year we even issued IOUs. And the voters in California got sick and tired of it. And essentially, they rendered the Republican Republican Party irrelevant, which is why there's super majorities in both houses. I think California voters are trying to send national voters a message about the way out of obstruction. There's two <laughs> ways out, right? One way is we need more compromise. The other is just elect overwhelming majorities of Democrats who can get stuff done. Well, you know what, until my Republican colleagues take their party back from being seized by an extremist minority within their party, I think we're going to be facing this. And so I have to tell you, when I came here to Washington, D.C., it was deja vu. It was just like mm. it was in California. But I'm happy that Speaker Perez and Center President uh, Daryl Steinberg don't have to deal with the challenges I did during my time. Your constituents are some of the people that are going to benefit from the law, and I'm, I'm curious right. how it is playing in your district right now. California, like Kentucky, a little bit like New York, is one of those test cases. It wasn't in the federal exchange. The website worked reasonably well from the beginning. It has made improvements. How is it playing in your district right now? Well, it's playing very well in my district, and I know this every day from calls we get. But a few weeks ago, Chris, we had a town hall in my district. Hmm. We had over 400 people turn out, and we were doing enrollments on on the spot and we also had a town hall where we were talking to people while they were waiting for their appointments and everything went really well people came with very genuine questions but the majority of the people with the exception of four or five really were supportive of the law and wanted to do everything they could to make it run better and to enroll. And so there are things that we could do to improve the law, but as long as you have one party that is calling for repeal, although I hear they're running away from that now, when I first came, their mantra was repeal and replace. I've been here three years now. I haven't heard any replacement. Yeah, in fact, John Boehner today was uh, w was quite nonspecific about the possibility of a replacement. You, you have uh, California delegation meetings with your colleagues across the aisle, I imagine. Yes. Well, actually, we have California delegation meetings as Democrats. Uh, there's 53 of us in the caucus, including Democrats and Republicans, so we're quite large. And do you get the sense that, that your Republican colleagues at the congressional level, they must be facing a barrage of constituent inquiries about the health exchange, about enrollment. How are they handling that? Well, I have to tell you that the California Republican delegation is a mixed bag. Some of the Republicans do come from very conservative districts, which are not very many in California, who are against the Affordable Care Act. But many of my Republican colleagues do come from more moderate districts. And I happen to know, because I know them personally, they don't really subscribe to some of the extremism that they have to come here and act out in order to survive their party.